Welcome back to the Photo Banter Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Gagne, and on today's podcast, I speak with photographer Jessica Chow. Jessica has worked with clients such as Rolling Stone, Wired, The New York Times, and Billboard, to name a few. In this interview, I speak to Jessica about how she got into photography, some of her early assignments, how she approaches portraiture, and I also speak to her about her shoot with Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. Jessica is someone whose work I've been following for a while now, so I was really pumped to get a chance to hear her story with photography. So I hope you enjoy, and thanks so much for listening. All right, well, Jessica Chow, welcome to the podcast. Excited to talk to you. Uh, discovered your work through Instagram, how I find a lot of people's work, so really excited to talk to you. Um, but I guess with everyone I've been talking to lately, I guess like how's life, how's photography? It's been a crazy year with everything going on, but how are you doing? Um, well, I mean, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's very cool to be on here. Um, things have been good. Um, I mean, there's all things considered, things are, things are good. Things right. are good. It's a little bit uh, hard to like, I feel like keeping sane, but at the same time, I really have like not a whole lot to complain about, you know? Um, I think I'm in a fairly good position where I'm at, so I'm just trying to make sure I'm, you know, not taking it for granted. That's good. So like during this kind of whole pandemic, you've been kind of staying busy, still kind of taking assignment work and shooting the whole while pretty much? I have been. Yeah, I feel very fortunate to be like to have been like keeping busy. There's been like some projects that were like in the works before the pandemic hit and that it kind of went on pause for a minute. And then, but when things like picked back up, it was just like kind of, it was sort of like I was in, inundated with stuff that was happening. Because there's also another bit about it too, where I was like, okay, I was getting a little bit worried. So I was just thinking, what do I need to do to like shore up business or just think about what's happening? Yeah. Um, so I started doing like a lot, a lot of my own stuff. And then now it's just all sort of like com compounded where like, like my days are kind of stacked at the moment, but at the same time, I'm like, anything to get me out of like the headspace of what's going on out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, especially where you're at. I think you're in San Francisco, right? Yeah. So like on top of the pandemic, like in the last two weeks, you've had guys have had all the like the fires. Like yeah. buddy, I saw like what two two weeks ago or something, my buddy out there, he sent me a picture and it looked like the apocalypse. It was just like <laughs> orange skies and it was just like crazy. Yeah, no, for real. It's like the um Roger Deacon, the guy who did the cinematography for Blade yeah. Runner. It's like he it's like he could have just I saw I some I saw on I saw on Twitter someone took a photo and they 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 paired it and they yeah. from like Blade Runner and then actual San Francisco in 2020 exactly. it was like legit the same thing so it was pretty nuts uh, it really was I mean it's actually kind of incredible what Roger Deakins was able to pull off with that but <laughs> it was because that's exactly what's going on it was uh, it was like super weird it was like so hard to not bug out from that yeah is like the air quality gotten better now or is it still it has. Cold? Yeah. yeah, today when I woke up, the sun was shining, like just straight through the window, and I was just like, "All right, <laughs> we're back on, we're back on the planet Earth." <laughs> That's good. Maybe for a second, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I guess like being that you're like a portrait photographer, I know you do more than that. Um, have you kind of had to adjust how you kind of approach portrait shoots with the pandemic and everything, or is it anything like different, like in terms of how you approach it? Um. Cause I, I, know, I know, I know, I know like myself, like, cause I shoot a lot of like tight portraits. So mm -hmm. now I feel like I can't really do that. So I got to either use like a longer lens or I got to back up or do some okay. approach. Cause I used to get like right up in people's grills, but now I'm not really doing that. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I think with like, I mean, my shoots in general, they're kind of like pretty, um, they're pretty small. They're not like big shoots. Mm -hmm. They're not like huge productions. I'm not having like a whole lot of crew. Yep. Um, you know, the most is at a given time could be like three assistants, but that's like pretty unusual for me. Um, yeah. Like one or two is more than really what I need. Um, but yeah, I've been shooting with like long lenses as well. Like, I mean, I think on the one hand, it's like, it's been kind of cool because people are a little bit more like, you're going to walk into a shoe and just kind of like show up type of deal. And there's a little bit less of like a whole 
we're going to have to get all this like works into place and you just kind of get back straight into the photography into like yeah. the portrait like yep. sort of obsession yep. and kind of work that way but you know it's just with, with a bit of a different lens at this moment yeah for sure like i know i did i did an assignment for the wall street journal the other week and they were like they they specifically asked like shoot outdoors so yeah like, we, which was fine but it was just like it made me think differently because we were at a location where it was actually like there's some cool stuff indoors but i couldn't really utilize it so it was just like <laughs> a kind of a different approach but yeah it's just kind of working around it so it's just kind of been interesting how here and how people are kind of approaching it you know yeah yeah for sure i mean i feel like sometimes the constraints or like whatever it is that's like being put around you it's like it's kind of fun to kind of just like work around them just to see like yeah. where your brain can go for sure. Like it's been really interesting seeing all these people do like virtual shoots. I haven't like tapped into this. I don't, I just don't think I really have an interest in doing it, but it's been like pretty amazing. Like people are doing like, like magazine covers and like crazy yeah. shit. <laughs> it's been <laughs> pretty nuts. Like, I know. There's a, so there's a photographer, um, Harry Dukovic, who was, who did oh, that yeah. video cover. And it was like, when you saw the behind the scenes, it just looked like a whole like NASA. I didn't understand <laughs> the point. I didn't understand the point of that one though, because if the idea was to be socially distanced, they still had an entire crew there. So it didn't yeah. really make any sense to me. Like I've seen some, I mean, no disrespect to him. It was interesting to watch. Uh, yeah. But it's been, cause I saw some people, I talked to this guy recently, he like mailed a camera out to somebody and then had uh, had them download capture one and then download like a screen sharing app. And he like walked them through the entire process. And oh then just, it was nuts. I was like, I don't have the patience for that. You know, <laughs> I, I wish I did, but like, it's, it's pretty I, know, I barely have the patience to walk through it myself. I'm like, oh my <laughs> <laughs> First, I hate shooting tethered. <laughs> uh, I guess, but to go back, like, uh, I was kind of curious, like, where do you grow up and how do you kind of get into photography initially? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in the San Gabriel Valley, which is uh, 10 minutes east of Los Angeles. Okay. It's a majority Asian population. So it's like everybody in my high school was like, I mean, it was, I would say like 60% Asian and 40% Latino. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's like a, you know, minority like immigrant community where I'm from, um, very suburban as well. Um, and I guess though how I got into photography, um, I, I mean, I, well, for one, I took a class um, in college and when I went to community college, um, I took a class thinking that that'd be an interesting like art credit to take. And it was actually from that class where I was just like, after the first semester I was like, oh, I think I want to be a photographer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I think essentially though, it's um, really, um, I was, I had learned also from that, from these courses that there's a thing called photojournalism. And at the time, like, you know, 9-11 had just happened a few years prior to that. And I think it was just like, you know, very young and just ready to get out in the world and really try to figure out what was going on and try to be part of something. And that just felt like, oh, here, that's the perfect yeah. reason that's to cool. go in. So did you end up going to school for photography or do you just kind of teach yourself or like what were you kind of doing uh, early on, I guess? Yeah, so I was actually studying history. So I studied history at UCLA. So first I went to um, community college at East LA College. Um, I took photo credits there and just took photo classes just as like a art elective type thing and then kept up with like my history like thinking I'm going to go to study history. And I thought that would be good as a background for journalism. And um, I transferred to UCLA, studied Middle East history there, when, was on the student newspaper, The Daily Bruin, and really just sort of built my um, experience through the newspaper. Because it was oh, just like... That's cool. So you were going, you're studying history, but the whole time in the back of your mind, you, you kind of knew already you wanted to pr pursue photography pretty much? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's, it, that's an interesting <laughs> approach. Like at most, at, I think it's really cool. Like honestly, I went to photography school, but like you don't really need it. Like <laughs> I, I, honestly, I think that was kind of a cooler approach. Probably uh, when when you're working at the newspaper, um, what kind of stuff were you shooting at the Daily Bruin? Uh, what do you kind of remember about it? it? Did you kind of feel like you learned a lot from this kind of being a part oh, of that? Yeah, yeah, big time, big time. Because I feel like it was just like, I mean, I took photo classes like at East LA College just to learn photography, the skill, right? But then there was, I wasn't uh, pushing myself to like go out and 
make photos and practice photos. I just didn't know how. And then yeah. I guess like having assignments or like shooting for the paper, it just like forced you to get out of your comfort zone and get into these places that you, that I traditionally just didn't know that you could do. It just like in terms of behaviors, it just didn't seem like a natural thing for me. And um, so I, I, when I was there, I actually worked on a, a, a long-term like documentary piece about undocumented students in, at UCLA. Yeah. And it was like sort of, I was like the very, very beginning, or not the very, very beginning, but sort of like maybe five to 10 years in of like all of the like bill, like the writing of the bill and the movements and stuff. And this was like right before um, uh, students were starting to like get arrested for the protest. So there was like this kind of this space where they were like gathering a lot of attention. And so I just, I started following a couple of these students for like, about a year um just kind of like following them in like the process of their daily life and then all their activism work um and that was just like a tremendous tremendous experience and um putting that package together at the end like when i worked on it i didn't tell anybody that I was doing it i just started doing it and um oh so it was like a side thing you're kind of working on for yourself besides all the daily brewing stuff you're shooting for yeah you. yeah so that was like one thing but actually so the daily brewing stuff also was just like shooting like sports, taking portraits, you know, like going to um, like art theater shows, taking photos. Like, so, I mean, it was kind of a whole gamut. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. really cool. And like, I got so much respect for like photojournalists, especially like work on stuff like that, where it's very personal stories. Like, did you kind of always have the confidence in approaching people and working on projects that like that from the get go? Or do you feel like it's something you kind of got stronger at the longer you did it you think I think that's something that I got stronger at the longer I did it but I, I feel like I've always had this like I mean when I was very young I was very very idealistic um very passionate so it was just like I was very like motivated by this thing I was just like I have to go figure this out and make tell like the most amazing story <laughs> yeah yeah all of this um so that's like what probably was like the the drive behind like trying to figure out how to make this the thing yeah yeah. yeah sorry cool. yeah no i was just gonna say like did you kind of already have a goal in mind for the type of work you want to do like obviously you're doing like journalism like did you think like you're gonna work at a newspaper or kind of just work on documentary stuff or like what did you kind of think you were gonna do back at usa <laughs> No, I mean, my whole idea of what, like, the photography, all the different genres was just such a mashup. Like, I had no idea about, like, all the sort of different, like, yeah. tracks of photography. It's like, I studied Middle, Middle East history. I thought I was going to be a conflict photographer. But, like, the wit, the stuff that I gravitated towards was, like, work by, like, Alex Soth. Like, I discovered Alex Soth work, and I thought I needed to be a Get it. Get an eight, get an eight by eight, get gotta buy eight by ten and move to Minnesota. <laughs> exactly. Actually, I didn't even know that's what I was supposed to do because actually it was just like, oh, I love what Alex Soth is doing, but then I'm gonna go and try to be an AP photographer. Yeah. Like it was just like completely like just yeah. none of it made. Any, I had no idea. I didn't. I didn't know. It took me a while to figure out like the differences between all the. Yeah, because like, who are some of your favorite photographers early on? Like, you remember, like you said, Alex Solt, or there kind of any other like influences early on? You kind of remember looking at their work, maybe back in college or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. So Alex Soth was one. Larry Sultan, I definitely really really love his work. Yeah. Um. Uh, Dave LaChapelle. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I can kind of see that too. Actually, like in the recent photo you posted on Instagram of uh, the performer, uh, Mo what's her name, Monet? Uh, uh, Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet. Yeah. Uh, it kind of has a David LaChapelle kind of the colors and stuff. I can kind of see that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was actually kind of funny. I actually did like this. Um, this shoot with like this cheerleader who, and this isn't at the Daily Brew, and I did a shoot with this cheerleader. Um, who was like a woman studies major. So she was like a feminist. But then I put her into, I, I mean, just thinking about it now, it's like, oh my God, what a terrible like art direction <laughs> idea that I did. <laughs> I was like so heavily influenced by David LaChapelle, like thinking this is the shot I want to try. And then I, I don't even know. <laughs> like, oh, I got to buy like all the props and like the, all the, all the lights and everything. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's like, any, like any, I remember back in college, like I loved Platon. So I started shooting like oh, black and white, Hasselblad, yeah. like wide <laughs> angle. And then I realized like, this ain't me. Like I can't, you, 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 but I think it's like as a young photographer, it's almost, it's like a good uh training thing to like try to like 
co- not yeah. co- kind of copy other people's work and just try to figure out who you are and kind of take little pieces from everyone's, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think so. I think that's like sort of like how you're like exploring all the like all the different types of photography and how like how you work as a photographer, what you like, you know, and then as you're trying to work with them, I mean, you just kind of like, you have to kind of sp- like, you take little pieces from everybody, I think. Like, I don't know about you. Like, when I was, uh, when I got out of college, I was assisting a lot. And I worked for all different types of styles of photographers. And right. I'll take, like, take, like, little pieces. Like, oh, that's cool what he does or, like, how he approaches right. it and kind of did it. Um, but I don't know. It's just kind of, it takes a long time to figure it out. And I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when you got out of college, like, what did you do? Did you go straight to shooting? Or what was kind of your next step, I guess? Um, yeah, I was like, um, uh, like a very, very spaced out, like, person, like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, of all, and it's like really funny, because I graduated in 2008 during the stock market crash. Okay, good. And perfect. I was just, having, yeah, it was like, everything was like, perfect. <laughs> but I think it was just, just, I was so spaced out. I didn't even, like, I remember somebody, like, a month before graduation was asking me, like, hey, so what are you going to do after college? I was just like, I don't know. Are we supposed to think about that now? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm waiting for summer. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to go hit this barbecue, yo. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's a good approach. I like it. You know, take it how it comes. <laughs> no, it was really funny. It was just, I was so spaced out. But, I mean, no, I, I actually did. I tried to, like, but I, you know, that kind of what was like, oh shit, I guess, I guess I better like start thinking. And then, um, I, I actually emailed like a couple of photographers who had admired. One of them was, um, Nina Berman. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Great. back in the day, it was just, I was super, I actually had seen her at like some kind of little press photo conference. She was telling, talking about her story and I was like completely moved by it and just like, it was like, well, I have to like get in touch with you type, yeah. that type of like feeling. And I wrote her an email, like, hey, so I was like, oh, you know, like, are you looking for any assistance or something like that? And I think at that time, she hadn't really taken on interns or like assistants, but she was like, she wrote an email that said, like, oh, yeah, if you ever find yourself in New York, contact me. And I took that as I'm moving to New York. Oh, my God. (laughs) I made it. I got a job. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So that was like, I was just such a. I'm, it's such an embarrassing story. I think that's probably no. Everyone's. I've done the exact same thing. You get like so excited because you're like, "Holy shit!" Someone responded to my email. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm and, alive. Exactly. And you send all these emails thinking like no one's ever gonna respond to you, and then like somebody who like you completely were just like enamored with their work was just like, "Oh great, yes, this means this means I got a chance." So. Yeah. Yeah, so that quickly turned into like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the first step of photography, this rejection. Once you can get over that hurdle, just the door is <laughs> shutting, man. You're halfway on your way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the more you can take, I mean, exactly. I think that's so true. <laughs> yeah, so like yeah. once you kind of talked to Nina, you're kind of still in LA, like what was kind of your first, like did, did you end up working at like a newspaper or assisting or what, what kind of were you doing, I guess? How did you kind of get your foot into the commercial photography world, I guess? Um, well, I mean, I think that's like from from that point to like now is like, it's like a really long road. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, when I was in New York, I basically like, I was, I was working in retail. I was working at a store called French Connection. So mm-hmm. I was in LA working there and I got a transfer and started working there in New York. Okay. So I did that. I did it just for like a few months, actually. It was probably like a six month thing where, and then I um, went, you know, tried to assist with um, Nina Berman kind of doing some studio stuff, but then it was just very like, I think she, I think it was all kind of got really a little bit awkward. I don't even think she can she remembers me at this point. But yeah. um, it was like a, like maybe four weeks of it. And I was just like, oh, I guess I totally misread that. And then um, yeah, it took me a while to kind of get myself back up again. Um, I think like for a few years there, I just kept on thinking I needed to kind of follow like a very traditional track, which yeah. is like um, get hired at like an institution first and then figure it out. Yeah. So I tried to like. I did an internship with ABC seven news. I did was on online news department. And then, but I, but I had nothing to do with photography at that point. It was just like, do that. And then, and then you can figure things out. But it, <clears throat> it ended up being like, 
they were supposed to hire me on and then we did the whole contract and everything and then somehow for whatever they just totally like blew me off yeah and then that didn't work out but then anyway so it just like was a few of these like missteps and then i finally um found myself working for like a wedding photography studio in la um she like the photographer herself she was actually somebody who came from a photojournalism background okay i and i think that was like something that sort of like helped me get a better sense of like what goes on behind like running a business and actually like making money from photography and this kind of the day-to-day stuff yeah yeah the day-to-day stuff like the workflow how to even like download photos properly and then like how to deliver it to clients and then editing the photos like all this sort of stuff that you know you naturally kind of do for your own work but then you don't really have a system for I like learned that there's a system for it and then she was also like uh, photographing for a lot of like you know Hollywood and celebrity people too so just being kind of like already I was like okay so this is this world here and kind of getting a glimpse of that um, and was able to kind of see from there like how to do things that's cool and were you kind of working with the wedding photographer would you ever like uh, like second shoot weddings or anything like that or was it more just kind of working in the studio or yeah so it was a studio thing it's like a studio assistant and then also like assisting on the field whenever there was a shoe Mm. assisting on the shoe and then sometimes like when there was like you know time off i can take my camera and go and shoot and so so it was just sort of like a sort of way for her to kind of like double up and then also kind of like help me out with like you know thinking practicing photography thinking about like how you take these photos and everything so it was a it was a great experience it was a great experience that's cool did you enjoy wedding photography or did you kind of always because looking at your work now like you shoot for all the biggest magazines like wired billboard like variety everybody like at that point did was that kind of like a dream of yours or what were you kind of thinking i mean no, I don't think I was like thinking I was going to do wedding photography. Like I was still like on the side, like trying to figure out like a documentary route. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like trying to find other work, like, cause it was, it was a part-time thing that I was doing with the wedding studio. And yeah. so I was looking like, for part-time work doing like, you know, I think there was like one where I was trying to work with a producer or director who was working about homelessness in LA. And, you know, I, I don't, that never really panned out to anything, but it was like, I was always sort of like, looking for these types of things. Um, but I actually, um, so how I got my first job was, um, my, my first like official photo gig Yeah. was, um, well, actually there was a couple of uh, two, two scenarios. So I actually had like a, a portfolio up on light stalkers. I don't okay. know if you remember that. No, I don't even remember it. What was it? Was this like an online gallery or something? Yeah. It's like an online forum, like kind of community site for, um, reporters and, photographers and it was a lot of a lot of photojournalism people okay um and so it was like and you can put up your portfolio online as well and that's that's sort of how like maybe photo editors from like different parts of the country could find you kind of like a what blink is doing today yep but like a very like lo-fi tech type thing and i had this like just like really rinky dink portfolio it was just like horribly edited it was just awful (laughs) but uh but um but uh Sipa Press from France got in touch with me because they were looking for a photographer to do behind the scenes on some commercial shoots. Um, they, they couldn't tell me like who or what it was for, but I was just like, sure, okay. So I sent them some like images that I had taken from my portfolio and then some stuff that I had taken from the wedding photography yeah. work. And um, so some, you know, I, I got a, it was like that very like reportage kind of look and um, I got the job. And it turns out that at my first day of, sh- of shooting was um, working on behind the scenes on a L'Oreal commercial with Gwen Stefani. Oh wow! So so it went from like so it was just I was just thrown right into it like in that sense. And then that actually turned into that whole like gig turned into like a two to three year stint. So for like two to three years, I was shooting behind the scenes with like Gwen Stefani, Eva Longoria, J Lo, Beyonce. Like there was just like all these like A-list talents that I was just settling around all the time, like for 14 hours a day. And what were they using the photos for? It was just kind of like, they, what were they kind of for, I guess? Yeah, I think they were, um, it was like, a lot of it was for marketing. Um, a lot of it was like, you know, they would use it on their products. Like it's also, especially with internal marketing, other times they would use it for like press releases and stuff. So 
like when um, Gwen Stefani was like the spokesperson, that was an announcement. So then you you send out a bunch of photos to show like that her on set or like these behind the scenes look. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Yeah, it's kind of like you never know like where your jobs are going to come from in this business. Like you can have all the plans you want, but like you say, you kind of threw your work up there and then someone hit you up. And then three or three years later, you're shooting Gwen Stefani and all these people. It's just kind of interesting to hear how it kind of happens for people. Cause it's all, at least for me, I don't know. It, it, this all seems like so random a lot of the times, you know? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it feels a little bit of a crap, crap shoot. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But it's just like rolling the dice. I'm like, all right, I hope if someone emails me today or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and kind of like hearing about you kind of shooting like kind of documentary stuff and looking at your work now it's a lot of like lit portraits and some like stylized a little bit like when did you kind of start building that type of work I guess um I think it was just like over time like actually I still I'm still very much rooted in like the documentary lifestyle type sense but I guess um Well, I mean, I think because a lot of those shoots, like when I am on those shoots, like I'm not, what I want and what I would like is to have more collaboration and participation. Um, and sometimes when it's like, when you don't, when it's like a shoot where you kind of just show up type of thing, it's like there's, I feel like there's just so many aspects of it where you're just leaving it up to chance, like you're pulling Hail Marys all the time. And I think that was kind of like frustrating for me for a while. And I think I wanted to start like kind of controlling these um situations these aspects. yeah just these situations a little bit just because also i think there are so many photos where i look back even for my like more of my street photography work it's like when i see a successful successful image and i'm, I'm looking at how it was like the art beat like the colors how the color scheme would kind of all work together to make this photo is be what it is and mm -hmm. i was just like hey, well actually like maybe i can actually make kind of go in this with a little bit more like add some structure and framework for us to collaborate in yeah because i would imagine a lot of times looking being that you're in san francisco you photographed a lot of the big like like silicon valley like tech types and like you said yeah. like a lot of times you're showing up to these offices and they'd stick you in a corner so it's like it, it, that's kind of the yeah. hard part of it a lot of times so i guess like that's when you kind of get creative and like you've done some really cool stuff where then you photograph what is it uh, george took high i love this photo you did oh, yeah. like, it's like two you brought like two seamlesses and they're different colors and it's just kind of yeah. it was just really kind of an artistic approach you know yeah no that was like actually like a very direct homage to um david hockney so okay. the shoot itself was about like gay pride and or this or actually the stonewall like anniversary like 50 years of Stonewall. So, um, and you know, we're thinking about the colors of the rainbow that was definitely part of the inspiration. So, but it was like, okay, let's just, um, instead of just being like colors and rainbows, like let's like deconstruct it. So I was just like doing some photo research and just like thinking about how to envision all of it. And I came across um, this David Hockney portrait, seated portrait series. And it was just like, I think, I think we can pull it off with George Takayan and um yeah i love i love how that shit came out turned out yeah yeah it was great and you know like when you're photographing some of these like high profile people be it whatever it's mark zuckerberg or an actor or someone like that like how do you do you have like a way you like to prepare for a shoot like like do you do a lot of research on the people like i know you said earlier that you enjoy collaboration but obviously sometimes you just don't get that based on yeah. your personalities <laughs> but like uh, do you uh, what's your kind of process once you kind of get that call for the assignment like how do you kind of approach it yeah. I guess? yeah i think it just sort of also depends on like how involved the um photo team like the uh, magazine or whatever magazine or the paper is going to be um but generally speaking, um, if I'm kind of given free reign, like the Mark Zuckerberg shoe, I feel like it was like I had no idea what the story was. I just kind of knew it was going to be it's an interview and something was happening at Facebook. So it was, so I understood that. But I was just like, okay, well, I mean, I want to go into this. Like, I mean, that was like probably the very, like the, maybe the first shoe where I was, because um, I had actually shot that before I shot George Takei. Yeah. That was probably the very first time in, in this sort of sense where I was like, you know, I'm gonna take this moment and try to take, make an opportunity, like make something out of this. Yeah. Try to make something as meaningful as I possibly can. Um, and try to go in with a little bit more intention than like showing up and trying to figure out what's gonna look good. And I I think I was like trying to understand like 
Mark Zuckerberg and all the different, in sort of like the place that he was in at the moment that I was photographing him. Mm -hmm. But I think like up until that point, what we understand from like Mark Zuckerberg is like, first he's like the, you know, the kid with the vision. He's the visionary tech person. Then he becomes a king of tech. And then, you know, for a period of time, he's going to be like president, like president Zuckerberg of the United States. Now he's the villain. Now he's the straight (laughs) villain. I don't know if you've watched the social dilemma yet on Netflix. Yes. Go check that shit out. That'll make you want to delete your <laughs> Facebook real quick. <laughs> I know. That actually that that documentary made me just like not link up anything with my Facebook. I'm just We're, like anytime it's asking, like uh it maybe I'll, I'll pick Apple. <laughs> but it doesn't even matter though. They're like the, the part in the documentary. They're like, yeah, even if you're not on it, you're on it. And hey, we're, we're, yeah. we're all just pawns. So it's just kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this this is like one of those things where I feel like I would love to like. I'm like toying with the idea like, should I go back? Should I go to law school? And then should I like just work on privacy law? Like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. You got. It. You got heart. You got integrity. You really want to solve the world problems. Everyone else out here is just trying to get the next ad campaign. So they can like, <laughs> I respect it, Jessica. I'm very, I'm still very idealistic. <laughs> no, it's good. You need those people, you know? I mean, uh, no, I actually, I actually know I don't have any, like, I don't have that grave a discipline to go into law school. No. But anyhow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like you said, like with that Zuckerberg shoot, you said yeah. you kind of want to go in with some intention. Like, what was kind of your approach with him? Like, like you said, like, right. look at a lot of the photos that, that have come before people, other people have shot of him or like, what was kind of your idea with that shoot? I, I mean, at that time, it was like very easy to like paint him as the villain, like, which, I mean, you know, he's like the destroyed democracy now, right? Like, mm-hmm. with Facebook, but it's but I really want to just try to like remove this narrative because that's the part where it's just like everything that's going on. It's like, it always feels so unfathomable. Like you have these characters that sort of loom so largely in your life. Like they have such huge impacts in your life, but like, how do we like pull back the curtain and try to understand like the motivation behind somebody? Like what makes a person tick? Mm -hmm. What, where's a, like, can you really understand where, the environment that a person is in to see why they make a certain choice. Mm -hmm. I think at that point, the way I understood it is like, I mean, mean, Facebook 10 years ago when it started, it was like just this really fun platform, right? And I don't think anybody could have really anticipated what it would have done to society. I mean, I think there was definitely like people who were reading that alarmist, but I think, you know, it was very abstract. Yeah. and now it's like sort of at this point where you're suddenly realizing what has been done with it. And he's at, it almost feels like he felt like he was at a crossroads where it's like, he was going to have to make a choice, like what type of person and what type of company was Facebook going to be? Mm-hmm. I mean, am I like an expert in on um, tech journalism? No, but like, but at least I've been mean, sometimes it's like, I can, it was more about his leadership at that time. And how do I tell this story? Like, how do I try to understand this? And I think that's sort of, I just sort of took it, took this assignment and try to make it in some ways, kind of a little bit something for myself, mm-hmm. you know, versus just like making a, a, making an assignment. Um, and I think it was like, it was very, it was, I, I mean, I'm really happy with the photograph that I was chasing for, like the one that's, a, it's up on my website. Yep. And, um, and I think it's probably maybe like the, the one moment where I, you kind of get a, a glimpse of him like looking human feeling human in some ways or another and i think that's the part where i'm I'm, otherwise i don't know how else to understand what's happening yeah for sure and like when you're kind of like you said collaborating with subjects like when he kind of walks in the room like do you kind of have like a short conversation with them beforehand of like what you're trying to execute um what was kind of your i guess dealings with him was he very collaborative or was it just kind of like sit down shooting fish in a barrel i guess <laughs> um no i think like it was a pretty collaborative like i was like making sure that um the pr team like who was with us most of the time just kind of understanding what i was like after what i was up to and i was also shooting tethered as well so they could see what i was doing mm-hmm. i mean i think like their and their interest was probably to try to make like um make all of it feel a little bit more bright and airy, but I'm just like, okay, you know what? You're at, you guys are not in like a good place. I don't, that would come off as extremely messenger anyways. Like, yeah. 
it just is not the right look for the right moment. And um, so, yeah, so I feel like we, we were tethered and we were kind of going that for stuff. But I think for him, he's not, he's not going into a photo shoot thinking he's going to be like, <laughs> like posing for me or anything like that. He's just, no. he wants, he needs to get back to his meetings. He's yeah, like, like five minutes and gets out pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I was actually able to like get him to sit down for like 20 minutes with me. Um, That's pretty good. Yeah. It was actually, actually surprising. I actually photographed um, Cheryl Sandberg like a couple months ago or right before the pandemic. And she, it was like literally, I mean, she was somebody who like, I kind of hoped I had already scored brownie points with, but she still only gave me, like she sat there for six minutes and then she walked off. <laughs> oh, six minutes? She, she just like later just left? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that hurts. It's like, I'm over that, it, okay. That yeah. hurts, that hurts. <laughs> uh, yeah, those, those ones are tough. Like, yeah, how do you even, how do you approach those shoots where you don't have a lot of time? Do you kind of just like try to execute one photo like really well or just try to shoot a bunch of options really quick or like how? Because I, yeah, I would imagine, no. like, like you said, like going to Cheryl Sandberg, like you probably already knew that was a, might happen. Yeah. Like you might only get like five minutes or something. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we had like an idea. I mean, so I always ask for, anytime I go into a shoot, mm-hmm. I'm always going to ask for time, which is like, if I can't get the moment, get time with the subject, at least give me like an hour and a half to set up to kind of, or two hours to like load in, get situated. Um, I also try to figure out where we're going to shoot at before we I get to the site. So if they can send me like um, reference photos of what the space is looking like, then I understand what to prepare. Mm-hmm. Um, but for this one, we had an idea with it was for the Financial Times, um, the the Weekend Magazine. Um, <clears throat> we wanted something a little bit more like architectural, a little bit more line, you know, graphic driven. Um, and with blue skies, because we were just we were talking about gender and pay, equal mm-hmm. gender pay. Um, and so I already knew what our hero shot was going to be. And I, I knew at that moment that I was like making a risk by sticking her out in the sun. And, the, and that, the, the, because I knew that was going to be our hero shot, yep. I was like, okay, go for it, just do it. And so we set up for that setup. And sure enough, she was like not loving it. And she was like, can we just go into the shade? I was like, okay, great. But I got it. So I was like, okay, cool. It was a bit of like a safety shot, but it was also like, I got what I needed. So now we can move on and do this other look that's like a lot more pleasant, a lot more easy. And, you know, just try to like get her to relax in that space. But, you know, it's a lot of adrenaline on those situations. It's just like, yeah, like make sure you get something to cover yourself and then try to get whatever you can. Like if they give you the time, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's like a lot of like it's if sometimes it feels like a sport. Yeah. In a way, you know, um, and other and also because of that, it also feels very psychological. Like I don't know if you've seen the um, the ESPN documentary on Michael Jordan. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was just like I mean, just watching this whole thing and just seeing the understanding like team dynamic and how they're like moving through all these like trying to win a game, you know, trying to get to the playoffs, like all the sort of components that, that they were, it's just, it's incredible. I'm like, oh, and he was like playing, he was like playing mental warfare on all his teammates pretty <laughs> yeah. much. Like, like, yeah. It was crazy. I mean, I mean, I'm not bad intense, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, something, something, something to work towards, I guess. No, it was really, really interesting. Um, you know, yeah. one project I was interested in talking to you about on your website, it's called uh, Suburban uh, Chinatown. I was kind of yeah. curious, like, what that w- was all about. Was it a personal project? Maybe you could just kind of talk a little bit about it, I guess. Yeah, so Suburban Chinatown, it's, um, you know, it's about my hometown in the San Yuma Valley, which I mentioned earlier is 10 minutes east from um, L.A., and it's, like, predominantly, like, Asian immigrant community. And it's like the culture is a dominant Chinese culture. Um, it's the city that I grew up in was the first city in the U.S. to have a majority Asian population. Um, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, you're pulling through the work. Yep. Yeah. So I think it was just like a, I was, I when I started this project, it was like during a time when I was like very uh, sort of confused about where I was at in photography and working commercially, like editorially, commercially. Like I was like, just felt like I was just pulled into like 10 different directions and mm-hmm. not really knowing what my voice was or who I was as a photographer. 
And I started this project sort of like an aesthetic project, like a aesthetic practice. But um, as I was shooting it, and as I was just going on just practicing street photography and getting acquainted with that, um, like there was just all these moments that just sort of started making me realize it. I started looking at my hometown for the first time for what it was. Yeah. Like for a very long time, I was just like, oh, I just got to find a way to get out of here. Like, I don't want to be in the suburbs anymore. Like, I'm really bored and all this stuff. And like, you know, I don't want to live at home anymore. You know, like that type of feeling. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just like, there was just like this one moment where I was like out on my apartment balcony. And I was like looking over to this scene. There was a guy who was just like on his stepladder, like putting up like these like sunshades. And then it just looks like, like such a quintessential classic suburban, like this small, like suburban America in this term, term, as a respect. But then there was a twist. Mm -hmm. There was a twist because there was also like a outdoor walk in there. And then just like all the little, like tiny little details that just sort of like made up the, my experience growing up that, that I hadn't really been able to pinpoint. I think it was just like right at that moment, it was just like I finally understood where, where I was, which was a suburban Chinatown. Yeah. Like, you know, I think, I don't know if you can hear that. Was, was that like an airplane? Okay, no worries. But um, I think it was just like a moment where I had, I guess the proper term for that is ethnoverb, but it, I think it just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I was gonna call it suburban Chinatown, but, <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i think it was just that, that moment where i realized like that's where i was living and it just sort of gave me a context to understand my yeah my life and my experience and the thing you said earlier i can kind of relate to is like you say you're kind of confused on like what direction you want to go with your photography and i yeah. you know i struggle with this too because it's like this weird balance of like you have to make money to support yourself but then you have like your like artistic uh and uh, endeavors you want to go after um what do you do you feel like you kind of learned anything about your photography working on that project and like moving forward i guess yeah for sure i mean i mean i guess like i mean if you like before i went i went into like study middle east history thinking i was going to be a conflict photographer and ended up on a set on l'oreal commercials mm -hmm. like it just couldn't be further from like what i was trying to get after <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, for, for real seriously <laughs> <laughs> i mean maybe it was like one conflict was zone to another type of conflict zone <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um but i think it was just like it it was definitely like a practice in like my intentions which is like who am i as a photographer and i think that project was just sort of like it kind of brought me back to home i mean it was just like so like so meta in so many different ways which is mm -hmm. like it was where I'm from. I'm looking at that. I'm really trying to dissect and understand how do I view the world? Why do I think about things the way I do? And like that, when I started doing that and sort of like coming, like getting a better understanding, giving myself permission really to just like follow through on stuff and not like, you know, get approval from other people saying like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. It's like, oh good. Or like, oh, that's, you know, that's dumb. Why are you going to do that? Like, or like, uh, or be like, or like, this wouldn't work for this magazine or this wouldn't work for that client and, sh and shit like that kind of. Yeah. Like, at least yeah. That, it was just like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It was just like, I don't give a shit. Like, this is for me. I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to just go chase whatever it is I feel like right now. Yeah. Like and literally I, answering to nobody. And I would, I would imagine a lot of times I feel like that's probably the work that I like a lot of editors or this other photographers probably probably like enjoy the most because it just comes off as like sincere and really like pure rather than like some something that you can tell someone's trying to like shoot in a certain way to like fit somewhere you know yeah totally totally I mean I think there's nothing I mean when you're looking at work that's trying to like fit into a genre yeah. it's like what you see is professionalism right so yeah you understand that the photographer can make something happen but then you lose a lot you lose like you lose like why the photographer or where where this like image could have gone. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think that that was the project itself is definitely oddly like there are many times where I like talk with editors and I wouldn't have thought that they would be interested in this work where they're like, hey, when you I want to learn more about this. And I think at the end of the day though, like it actually kind of like does a really good job in sort of summing up like where all of my work even my commercial style like portraiture work like mm -hmm. 
where it all sort of stems from, which for me, I think there is just like a sense of trying to understand identity and American identity and this like kind of perhaps like a, a new sense of Americana. Yeah. Um, and it, and so it just like really trying to look at culture and identity and community. Like why do we understand ourselves the way we do? And, yeah. and I still like, so now because I have this, I feel like I can take on these like commercial, like more commercial style jobs, but I still understand how to funnel the work. I still understand like what it means to me and like how I'm going to approach it. Um, and how that kind of relates to the entire body of work, mm -hmm. which for me, I feel like that gives me a whole, a lot better sense of agency with like me being a photographer versus like me being like a, like, you know, hired monkey. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Cause yeah. like, do you ever feel like pressure to like utilize certain trends within photography? Like, like you'll see every few years there'll be like different ones, like gels were hot for a while and then like <laughs> other things like that. Like, do you even like, do, are you someone who pays attention to like what other people are shooting for magazines or do you kind of just try to focus on what you're doing and kind of block it all out or like, how do you kind of. Yeah. But the latter, for sure. The latter. I mean, I feel like at this point, I mean, for sure, there was like a moment in time there where even like the aesthetic practice with my street photography work, I mean, that was actually a really, really good tool for me to try to like, that really worked for what I was trying to go after. But that was also just like I said, that was just because I was also looking at Fader magazine. Like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah. And I really, <laughs> like, you know, I was like, yeah, I want to be like cool and edgy like that. And, <laughs> and then for a while there, I mean, but then, and then for a while I was just like, okay, I'm going to do like form studies. And I did a lot of form study work, which I actually still really like and informs a lot of my photography. Now it actually gave me just sort of like, that extra practice that when I get onto the set, I'm thinking it takes me a lot, a shorter time to get to where I need to get to. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, for sure, there was like a lot of these like, oh, this is what makes interesting photography, but it's just that, I was just like, man, this is just bullshit. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah. For sure. I, yeah. So I feel like I'm just like, I, you know, I think there's also even like maybe maybe that like the poppiness that's coming out of my work in my recent work is sort of like a response to like me being so like before trying to create like the most edgiest photograph mm -hmm. but to me I, I feel like I lost something there so I'm like going back to like okay let's just go back to what I like about an image and then build it back up again so it's always sort of like yeah. breaking it down and building it back up breaking it back down like yeah, there's just like little phases. Like I don't know about you. Like when I look back at some of my work, like two years ago, I kind of hate some of it, and I'm like, why did I, why did I do that like that? But it's just like it's just like a phase in your life, and it's just like you, you kind of tinker, tinker at it. At least I do. It's kind of every year. It's kind of yeah. trying, trying a little thing, well, to build on stuff, I guess. Yeah, totally. And actually, you know, there's even work that I look at from the past where it's just like I totally dismissed, and I was just like, why did I just like throw that out? Like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Like a very interesting photograph. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely, I, during this, like, quarantine, I was going through, like, all these old hard drives. I'm like, dang, I got some cool shit in here. Like, what's this been? <laughs> totally forgot about this one. <laughs> uh, Have you been, like, doing, like, a deep dive into, like, re-editing every your, like, work and body of work? Yeah. Yeah, trying yeah. to. It's just, uh, it's a lot. Like, I even, like, I don't know if you still have a printed book. I, I printed a new book, like, earlier this year, and that was just, like, that was a, that was just so much work. Like I don't know how people do it. <laughs> like it's just, it's a, it's a lot of money and it's like a lot of time and it's just like yeah. The longer you shoot, it's just like so much stuff to go through and it's like yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if I'm the best editor. Like some people are a lot better at it, but it's a skill in itself being able to like edit through all your own work. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's terrible. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate. I like shooting. I hate, I hate printing, and I hate like Photoshop post work. Man, I hate it. <laughs> uh, photo editors probably hate me because I I send like not that many photos like in uh when, when I turn in pictures. I guess. Oh my god! I I wish I could do that. I feel like I. I mean, it's like I feel like unless I knew I. Because for my own work, I'm looking for something, but I just always know that sometimes what I'm looking for in my own work just is not going to work as like an editorial story narrative. Because like, like if you if you shoot a portrait, like how many photos do you think you usually turn in or do you just send them everything? Oh, sometimes, I mean, I feel like I've like, I, I need to stop doing this, but I send in so much. I send in too many. Okay. Like, no, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably the worst. I was like, I've, yeah. 
I, I don't know. Maybe I should do it more like you. I got to hired more. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I need to. I think it's just you don't need to give yourself that much work to do. <laughs> yeah, for, it's not, <laughs> and we're not getting paid that much money. To be no, no, for sure. To <laughs> <laughs> be like uh, part of like the editorial team right now. <laughs> I love. I loved. I loved. I was looking at Instagram again, and on the Mark Zuckerberg picture, M- Michelle Graskoff, who I've had on here before. She was yeah. like, yeah, we both, we both photographed Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, we're both in the 1% with no money in the bank. <laughs> I was like, that's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that was like, like that's so hilarious. Because like, basically, yeah, we both photographed Mark Zuckerberg. He still has like a bajillion times more money. Than we, we, both, we both got paid 400 bucks or whatever. <laughs> I lost money on that shoot. I lost money on that shoot. <laughs> hiring an assistant yeah (laughs) that's funny um and then i noticed you did you shot a cool campaign you shot a campaign for the u.s census which i didn't even realize they did add campaigns and now kind of talking to you about your uh the project the suburban chinatown it kind of it almost makes sense it kind of feels there's like a similarity with like that work with the census stuff a little bit I mean, I shot some of it in Monty Park, which was like such a homecoming. Cause, mm-hmm. I mean, so actually one of the things about Monty Park, so that it was, it's the first city in the U.S. to have the majority Asian population. Okay. We learned that because of the 1990 census. When I found out about that in high school, that actually gave me a sense that I was like, oh, shit, we, like, we're part of, we're part of something. Like yeah. growing up, I always felt like it was like, oh, like, you know, there's America happening and then there's me in this bubble. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I felt like the, uh, your average everyday American kid, but then not really, we don't, we're not really part of that. And that sense of thing, just kind of like understanding that just giving, it was just like this little kick in the head. So yes, the, that was a really, really like special, like it was my first ad campaign. Okay. It was like, uh, like more money than I, like in terms of budget and, and production value, like than I could have ever handled. Like I actually brought up a production team with it. Um, and it was actually like, so I think what I have on my website is sort of like the key photos from each, um, from each like language, oh, but we shot like, I think, what was it five times? So 25. Yeah. So this is like the, the key, like we are the census and across like all the different languages that they were like saying that you can fill out the census and you're in, in all the different languages. And um, so it was, so we shot that, but we also did, uh, so it was a total of 25 different images that we made, oh, wow. um, stories. So we had like a, I think, a t- I think I had almost 40 talents casted for the shoot. How long did you guys work on this project campaign for? Um, I think the, from the production, like from the start of the production to the, to the actual shoot, I think it was probably like. It was a little bit drawn out, but it was like probably two to three months. And then how many shoot days was it? Because it looks like you guys shot quite a few people, like you said. Yeah. So we shot it over four days. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. We shot it over four days, I want to say. And then I think we did like six or seven looks per day. Yeah. And was being that you said it was your first ad campaign, like, like maybe you could talk a little bit about like, how did this kind of come about? Was like this like an agency uh, you had been marketing your work towards or how did this kind of... Uh, no job come uh, up for you yeah i mean like this sounds like again it sounds like all like a crap shoot but i mean i really feel like there's actually a lot more signs to kind of like getting work because I, I maybe one day will be better at like explaining that bit but um this shoot was actually uh, they had reached out the agency that wasn't the that got the bid from the government mm-hmm. had reached out to me as to put in a proposal so they reached out to me and two other photographers actually one of the other photographers is like a good friend of mine <laughs> so i didn't know at the time but we didn't know at the time when we we're putting the bid together um and so like i think he the the crew director had known about my suburban chinatown work so mm-hmm. he thought to reach out to me to um put put in a bid for this so when i got that call i took the call try to like understand the scale of the project and i was just like I just try to say very little, like I didn't want to reveal anything. That smart like, move. Smart move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just like, let them do the talking, and I try to ask some questions that was just like, okay, this is going to show that I know nothing. But, um, but and so after I got off the phone with them and got some information, like I was just like started researching producers. <laughs> I was just like, okay, next step. 
what do I need to do? Like, I, I, I know this is going to be a, like a fairly big budget. I know they're going to need casting. They're going to do all these types of other things. Like, they're not looking for me to go out and do like street photography and get what I get. It's actually going to do the whole like shipping. Um, so because I hadn't like had the experience with it before, I've uh, did some. I have worked. I recently worked with a really, really, really good producer who like she normally does like live television producing. Yeah. So she's like minute by minute. And so I reached out to her and asked her for some um, recommendations because she at that point had just started a new new gig. So um, I found uh, Wonder Partners in LA and they were just like top notch, like just really buttoned up. Just like, I mean, I could, I mean, it was like to a point where I was, just didn't have any stress. Like I've never been on a shoot where I wasn't like, you just gotta show. You just gotta show up, right? I mean, <laughs> one day where I showed up to the wrong location because I was so not stressed. <laughs> wow, that's inc- I see, well, I see. I wish I had your. I wish I had your mentality. It's like, yeah, let's just let it ride. Shit, I'd be sweating bullets. Like, I, I don't know about you, but I felt like <laughs> you go from like shooting editorial, where a lot of times, like you said, it can just be you. It can just be you. Could be one assistant, and now you're at this shoot where there's like ten people. You got assistants. You got all the yeah. art director. Uh, did it, I don't know, did it feel overwhelming at all? Like, it's just like, a, for me, like, I, it just felt like, it almost felt like it's, 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 it slowed down so much. And I felt like I had to, like, yeah. babysit people, kind of, like, make sure, you good, you good, you good, like, that type of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I felt like up until that point, I got the job, when I got the job and was, like, shooting the job, mm-hmm. I was at a point in my career where I was, like, I was ready to take on a, a a production of that scale. Like, Definitely. I had started work, like, you know, maybe, sorry, I'm going to close the window. Um, I had started working, like, with assistants, like, professional assistants, like, assistants who, like, know their shit. Know their shit, who can, like, literally save my ass, like, because, you know, if I'm, if I'm on shoots where it's like I'm getting five minutes with people, like, I, I can't tell you what to do. Like, no. it's, it just sort of, like, kills the mood. Yeah, you want them there's to like, like be able to think like two steps ahead of you. Yeah. I mean, there's like this one moment where I remember like having an assistant and I was just sort of like, I was like in the zone just sort of shooting and I was, I was like starting to move to try to find the apple box so I can sit on it. And then like my assistant was like, told the other assistant, grab her the apple box. Like before I even said anything, it was just sort of like this <laughs> motion. And I was just like, and then the apple box was just there and I sat down. I was just like, like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like one of those things where like suddenly it's like I don't do anything, but I'm just like the <laughs> it, it, no, that's what you want. You want it to run smoothly and like that's yeah. what, especially with that campaign stuff, you really do need that team. It's like a lot of moving parts. So it's like that yeah. that that's when you know you have like an organized shoot is when it just runs smoothly smoothly and you don't have yeah. any stress, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I and, think that like the people I've been working with, like, they're people who understand how I work and mm-hmm. I can really lean on them on their expertise. Like, yep. yeah. And that's, it's just such a game changer to like what I can do. Um, and yeah. Have you felt pressure? Like a lot of people feel like they need to have a rep if they want to work commercially. Um, I don't know if you have a rep now, but is that something you feel like you need or have felt any pressure to look for one or what's your kind of mindset within terms of that, I guess. I mean, I think like my mindset about, yeah, I, I would like to be repped. Um, I do think that, but I think that not so much about it as a career step, but more about it because it's like purely because of its um, business development. Mm-hmm. Um, it is about like just sort of having a, like I've noticed, I'm noticing right now where it's just like my day, my, it, I'm really stacked. Like, and I, my attention is like in 10 different places all the time. And it's like very, it's hard for me to bounce from like, bounce back and forth and just be like t- completely clicked in and engaged the second, you know? And so having, I think, I feel like I'm ready for the support. I'm ready for the support, but um, I, I think I still need to do a little bit of things on my end to try to like shore that up. But I'm hoping that's something that's going to happen in the near future. Yeah, definitely. Well, your work, your work's top notch. You're shooting for all the big people, getting those campaigns. Like I'm, I'm sure, you know, but yeah. It's something I think about a lot, it's, but it's just like you hear those war stories about people getting ripped off and shit, so it's like you got to talk to a lot of people, I think. That's yeah. what, 
I, I think this time. Yeah, for sure. I definitely feel like it's like a business decision and it's a decision that you really have to like consult yeah. your QuickBooks. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, they, 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 they take in, they take in 30% or 20% or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. It's like if they're taking money from editorial shoots, then no. Right. But mm -hmm. I don't. So um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess like to wrap up, like w what's next for you? Like, obviously it's kind of a crazy year for everybody just being a human being, but like anything you're hoping to work on or anything you're kind of excited about moving forward, I guess. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, okay. Right now. Yeah. I mean, I have a couple of assignments that I, I have one particular assignment that I'm like very, very much looking forward to. I'm just going to shoot that on Friday. Um, nice. I'm not going to say too much about that, but otherwise, I mean, I would like for a couple of things to wrap up, which is um, my suburb, suburban Chinatown project. Um, I've been putting together like a book dummy. I kind of want to speed that up and just kind of get it to the finish line with that. Nice. Um, I would like to reach out to some more agents. Um, I like I, it. Yeah. Sky's, sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jessica, right I can't thank you enough for taking the time. Like I said, uh, really uh, enjoy looking at your work. Um, thank we'll you. See more of it. And I guess for people listening, if they want to check out more of your work, like where's the best place for them to go? Uh, my website and Instagram. Yes, it's jessicachoephotography.com. And I'll put all the links in the description. People go check it out. And uh, you know, thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was really nice talking with you. So there you have it. That was the Jessica Chow interview. Just want to thank Jessica so much for taking the time to come on the podcast. Uh, like I said, big fan of her work, just amazing portraits and really interesting personal projects she's always working on. Uh, so definitely go check out Jessica's work at jessicachowphotography.com as well as her Instagram at chow2. I'll put the links in the descriptions, but you can go definitely go give her a follow. Um, like I said, really amazing portraits and whatnot. Uh, so definitely go check that out. And as always, I'll be having weekly podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, as well as the Photo Banter YouTube page. Uh, so definitely go check that out. And as always, thanks so much for listening and take care.